Hey guys, welcome back to another video. What kind of YouTuber would I be if I didn't put a video out today as Cardano is pumping yet again? You can see from the title here, I should be pointing this way, Cryptomania, Cardano, Coinbase pump, Ethereum is looking cheap. We're gonna look at that in the charts. Litecoin is dead. Binance burn, boom, looks like the 15th burn is coming. Chainlink to explodes is something that we haven't talked about in a while. All the big ones, plus, I have all the way down here opportunities I'm seeing at the moment. You're gonna to have to wait to see what they are until we scroll down. So we've got a lot to get through. You can see all the charts I wanna cover in today's video. So if you love the sound of that, let me know. Hit the like button down below. It goes a long way to helping the channel out. Comment, get here first, hit the subscribe and the bell notification icon. Like I'm saying in the comments, if the scammers can do it, so can you. Hit that bell notification icon because they are here bright and early. All right, guys. Let's dive into Cardano as the first chart. Let's start with Cardano versus US dollar. So this is our FIB level that we continue to watch. It's tagged basically from this low point here. So we've anchored it from the COVID crash to the current all time high. The areas we're watching above are the 1.618 level. So it's 100% of this plus 61% of this range down here projected on the top giving us $2.50 and the next level was $3, which is 100% of this range, giving us that three bucks up here. So this is something we've had on the chart for weeks now. Uh, basically since that top came in, this was something that we were looking at there. So it has been about, or it's coming up to about three weeks that we've had this on the chart, looking at $2.50 and $3. In terms of time projection, anyone's guess. It'll all be a guess for pretty much trying to figure out where this thing hits $2 or $2.50 next. I'm just more concerned that it gets there and it gets to $3 because they're the, the exit points that I'm looking at moving forward. Now, of course, you can go to $5, $10. You guys take your, your guess. You guys who think I'm selling one week, buying the next, I've told you that already. So if you see those comments in the comment section, disregard them. These people obviously don't understand what trading is. And if they get shitty, so be it. That's, what, that's the game, right? ADA versus Ethereum. We've looked at this. This was a turning point, 15th of March. Go back on that video. You can see we talked about it right here as a potential area to be getting into the market again, basically after selling out up here, selling out some of the position, all the position, whatever it was in your portfolio, this looked like a reasonable turning point back here on the 15th of March. So I played that in yesterday's video. You guys can see that. Looked like a turning point. And honestly, we've pushed a lot harder than I thought we would. Maybe, maybe from here, we'll just get a little bit of a move up and then just a little bit of a coasting. That would be nice to see so that we can get reaccumulation before another move up, but market will tell us what it wants to do along the way. We just gotta look for some good areas to exit because at the end of the day, we don't wanna be holding these things forever unless that is your game plan. So next thing is ADA dot. Now I put these pink lines in, these horizontals, because I've seen them floating around. People are sort of watching this channel here. I'd rather watch horizontal support and resistance, which seems to have more strength to it. And that's what I've learned in the past from older traders, experienced guys. It's the horizontals have the most strength and the, the, the diagonals aren't nearly as strong. So I put more emphasis on these. If you're trying to figure that out for yourself, that's the way I look at it because of what I've learned in the past. Not all of these support and resistance zones have the same strength. Really think about that. This stuff going up like that isn't as strong as the stuff going horizontal. It's, just, it's essentially all I'm saying there and I apply that to all of my trading. So Cardano across the board, last one left, Binance. It's also had a little push up, but now it just looks like it's consolidating into some sort of triangular pattern here. So maybe we get a little bit of push down, up again until we get either a break either way. Now this is gonna happen depending on what happens with uh, Binance because Binance should have another burn coming up. I think they're up to their 15th now. So with that in mind, let's have a quick look at Binance first. Binance ETH, still holding its ground up here. Maybe it's reaccumulating, maybe not. But what I'm looking at is this bar here, strong volume, that was the push up, but it hasn't had any sort of follow through. So really, I think it is just some sort of accumulation or a distribution. And obviously when you'll we'll find out is when it breaks either way. So that's not really helped to anyone, but the point is to just wait for the signal. The signal is either a breakout or a breakdown. And if you don't wanna wait for that signal, then you risk 
losing a lot if it happens to go down against us. So that's that's how the game is played when it comes to trading in this market. In terms of long-term buy and hold investing, dollar cost averaging, you, just, you don't really care about that. You look for areas that are long-term accumulation and you continue to buy. You look for breakouts and you continue to buy. So right now Binance is sitting on top or thereabouts of its old all-time high against Ethereum. That's a good sign. Binance USDT, way up there, way up there in its old, oh, this is an old, this is new all-time highs. So that's looking okay. We are in a pattern over here. So it's we've got to get a breakout and something that is decisive as well. Right now, it's just testing either side. Binance on the uh, Bitcoin chart is the last one here. Yeah, so it's just, just not getting the same volume that we were hoping for. We got a lot of volume through these days here, as you can see, back here, but the market didn't go anywhere. It just basically pushed up and came back down. So that indicates to me that it's not ready yet, but we are still finding support at this around uh, 44,000, 45,000 Satoshi level, which is pretty good considering it's had such a massive move already. So like I said, this one is undecided. I'm gonna to get to some of those in a moment. Uh, cryptocurrencies that look like they have some sort of decided range or decided direction on them. So we've covered Cardano, we've covered Binance. Let's have a look at Ethereum. Ethereum is our next one and that's let's go to our US dollar chart. Now I talked about this one being a reaccumulation, and I've heard that from other YouTubers as well, uh, in particular Ben Cohen, he's got his way of looking at it. I've posted this on uh, YouTube community posts over there, so if you guys wanna stay up to date with that, I've got that over there. Essentially, I was just looking at simple time counts here of uh, around 23 to 24 weeks up, 11 weeks until we break the top again, so down and sideways, and we've seen that again. So. This is the point here. Look at that, 25 weeks. And I think it was from this low to this high, 24 weeks. Low to high, low to high. Now, we've seen from this low to when it broke that top. So there's the top, there's the breakout, 11 weeks. And like I said in that post about three weeks ago now, maybe we'll see about five weeks to 11 weeks. I chose five because it's about half of this range here. So this was 11 weeks, and as the market picks up speed, then the timing usually shortens as well. So somewhere from around 50% of that time frame to about 100%, which is the 11 weeks. So I don't think it's gonna take 11 weeks. I'm really somewhere of the view of around 50 to 75% of 11. So that's about five to seven or eight weeks. So somewhere in that range, I think we'll get a breakout. And we've seen one, two, three, we're into our fourth week now. So I would say at least, maybe another week, maybe a few days at the earliest, at the latest, probably another couple of weeks. So that's what I'm looking for here in terms of a breakout and uh, this basic reaccumulation zone way up here for Ethereum. Ethereum BTC, not super strong, but it's just holding its ground at these levels down here now. So that's okay, but we really wanna see this start to push up a little more. Uh, from here, if this happened to break down, then this is not a very good sign for Ethereum Bitcoin. Of course, of course it's going down, but in terms of a FIB range, we really wanna see it hold up above that 38% there. Back to our list after my screaming child calms down. Okay, so we've gone through Cardano, we've gone through Ethereum, we've looked at Binance, we have Litecoin and Chainlink left, and then we get onto the opportunity. So let's take a look at Chainlink and then Litecoin. Link BTC possible another accumulation error. This is what we we're looking at all the way back in January. You can go back and check out those videos and I will make mention to that on the channel here, tons of videos. I have put them into playlists. All you have to do is go across click playlist and this particular playlist is more of a Bitcoin crypto for beginners and further down here, there are a lot of these ones that are like, um, you know, taking profits, exit strategies, Bitcoin crypto crash, um, staking Cardano, and plans of 1,000 to 100,000. So I've got something that's a bit more beginner friendly so that you can get some step-by-steps. So that's what I'm looking at here when we were talking all the way back in January as opposed to uh, talking about an accumulation zone for LINK as it started to break out. So we've come back and we're retesting this level. Worst case scenario, we break down and then begin to break these lows. That would be pretty bad for LINK overall. So we, we don't wanna break down from this point and then break down from here because 
that could mean that link will just be sideways against Bitcoin value throughout this bull market. In terms of its dollar value, it could continue to go up like it's doing right now. So just normally we went from 14, 15 bucks to 30 bucks. So it's doubled since the breakout in early January. So I'm referring to that point there because that is the, the level that we looked at link versus BTC. So around there to that top part. So it has gone up in dollar value, but we have not gained very much against our Bitcoin value, only about 20 to 30% in our Bitcoin value. So not, not so bad, better than holding it all the way from back here in August, but ideally we want to be getting more than that. But uh, for long-term holds without having to trade things backwards and forwards, I like this area as a buy, especially considering we're still up from there. Link versus ETH, very much looking for a breakout above this resistance. So I want to see that come back and then continue up. But I don't know if that's going to happen at this stage, especially with Ethereum looking like it's beginning to wind up to take off. So if Ethereum begins to take off and Link doesn't follow, then Link will shoot down. But if Link also follows, then they'll probably just move around this zone for a little bit longer. Um, so yeah, we're just going to take that into consideration, continue to watching it. In terms of a long-term uh, dollar cost averaging area, this looks okay uh, ch for chain link for buyers. This looks like an okay area. Obviously, breakdown from here, not so good, but for now, this looks okay. We definitely would, I would rather see a break up here, like I just said, repeating myself. That's That would be the key area to give the confirmation. For now, it's still playing with fire, but for dollar cost averaging, better than buying it back here pretty much straightforward. Okay, last one we want to have a look at is Litecoin. Is it dead? Is Litecoin dead? Dollar chart, doesn't look like it's dead, but you know we don't just base things against a dollar chart. We want to see Litecoin versus Bitcoin. And that is the sad state of Litecoin over, yes, it's entire, almost entire history. We know it came out in around 2013. This is from 2014. It has just lost all of its value against Bitcoin and continues to do so. So the guys who are loving Litecoin and they're just in here forever, you're probably better off just holding Bitcoin. Litecoin is not the silver that everyone makes out to be. I talk about Litecoin because I'm just looking for one of these. I want that. I want that. I want that. I want that. It does it enough times. So especially after a long downtrend pattern like we just saw here. Look at that. Long downtrend. We're getting the same thing here. Eventually, I'm hoping we'll see something like this. Even if we only get it to there, so be it. We have, how much have we doubled on our Bitcoin? All right, 200%, 250%. That would be ideal. All right, just get out. We don't need to sell the exact top. Doesn't matter. You've made some Bitcoin, some extra Bitcoin against Litecoin, and we move on. So this is the sad state of Litecoin at the moment. Uh, we were looking at it back in late December, early January, and it has just continued to fall. Volume is picking up. That's that's an okay sign. Well, it is usually is a good sign, but it continues to fall on higher volume. So at some point, we will get the turnaround. We will get something like this. I'm almost sh like sure, uh, very sure of it because it happens every single bull market. If it doesn't this time, that is terrible, terrible news for Litecoin long term, even with the Mimble Wimbles and the P PayPals and all that other news. It doesn't even matter because you're just not getting the gains against Bitcoin. I suspect a similar thing. There we go. Against Ethereum continues down, down, down. If Ethereum punches up from this point, then sure, we can expect this chart to also continue down against Ethereum. So it would have been better off holding Ethereum. So, so far that video I put out, Litecoin can crush Ethereum and Bitcoin, unfortunately is just not working out. One of those things, it's not working out at the moment. I suspect it will at some point, but it's going to be pretty swift and, and only happen probably a couple of times throughout the bull market if it happens at all. You know, I think it will, but you can you never really know. In terms of a time frame, when it does happen to that top, nine bars. So this is a weekly, basically nine weeks. What happens if we get from around this point, that was about 15 weeks to the first one, about six weeks. This was the halvening uh, through 2019 through a bear market. That was 16 bars, all right? So somewhere between that sort of six to 16 bars, so eight to 10 weeks, and then it's over. That's Litecoin for you. It's 
pump and then it's done for a very, very long time. All right, so last thing that we're gonna quickly touch on is opportunities I'm seeing. We didn't see much to do with Litecoin. It could pump, very high risk, a lot of money lost. Ethereum, reaccumulation, that looks the most positive. Cardano, it has punched through some resistance levels. Against the dollar, it's looking good. Against uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum, it's also punched up, so it was a good time, a good uh, turnaround point there. Binance, overall, nothing, there's no real say there. It's just in a trading range. So the best, oh, I'm sorry, and Link looks like a possible good area for a dollar cost averaging if it ex if it can crack through those highs. So out of all these to just sort of clear out some of the confusion, Ethereum looks the best, Litecoin looks the worst, Chainlink looks like it could be a good potential, ADA looks like it has started to run, and Binance is just setting up again. There's no signs on Binance just yet, which is not a bad thing. All right, opportunities. Here we are. Lit, Zill, Crow, TVK, Badger, One Inch. Let me start from the bottom up. Let's go with Zill if I can find it here. Here we are at Zillica. This is probably the first time I've talked about this on the channel. I flicked across to it last night and I saw this chart set up. You know that this is something that we absolutely love on the channel. Resistance, 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 and it looks like we are winding up to break through. You can call this an inverse head and shoulders. You can call it a cup and handle. You can call it a potential support resistance flip. Whatever you want to call it, the pattern is there. It looks like we are setting up to break out. And if we do, my first target is, where have I got the first target? Around these levels up here, around 600 sats just because there's a top here and there's some other tops here. And if we happen to break through that, then I'm live in the look of around a thousand sats and a little further up, 1500. So we do have some good returns to get out of this against our Bitcoin value. And I like it more so than, than Litecoin. Even if Litecoin does pump, I think Zillica has got some better fundamentals to carry it through long-term. So to this point, it's only about 70, to here about 200, here about 300. So the potential against Bitcoin is similar to what I was looking at with uh, Litecoin versus Bitcoin. But in terms of a longer term, I do like Zillica. Can it break through the tops? I, again, it's one of those ones that I think because of the fundamentals, it has more chance to break through than Litecoin does, especially on Litecoin with Litecoin's seven or eight years of history of just continuing downtrend. Zillica on the dollar, it is coming up to these old highs. This looks very similar to the Cardano chart. So if we can hold these levels, begin to accumulate again at these highs, I think we could be on the cards to see a breakout from here, especially after such a long period of accumulation, two years before we get a breakout on the dollar chart. Looks good. Zillica is the first one I have there. Now let's tick these off quickly. Next on the list is Lit. We've talked about this just a couple of times before. So Lit USDT. It's very much in a little trading range. There's not much data here. So I'm going to go down to the daily chart. Uh, this looks like it is beginning to get higher swings, high swing lows, high swing tops. It's setting up again. Volume is dropping, but it's in a trading range. So it's indecisive. Get a break above this. I think we are looking very, very good. So Lit is one of the better opportunities here, especially against Bitcoin value. There's nothing above here to stop it. There's no resistance apart from this high here at around 30,000. So Lit is looking lit. This was a good long-term accumulation period here. I mean, long-term, it's only one month, but it looks pretty decent. Let's look at TBK, which is a recent one that we've been loving the look of. It has taken off and come back. I think it needs another accumulation again before we can move up. So in terms of the dollar cost averaging, I like TBK. TBK BTC, the chart looks almost exactly the same. You guys that are asking, TBK, I believe it's on Uniswaps and those DEXs, and I think you can get it on Binance. So check those out. I don't believe it's on SwiftX. Lit, I believe, is on SwiftX for the Aussie guys. Uh, next one is CRO. We've talked about this before, and it is beginning to climb up without much news. Look at that. Okay, we just broke through as I'm filming. So this top just broke. That's a good sign. And CRO, Aussie guys, CoinSpot. There's a link in the description for that. I'll leave one down there. Uh, so that's CoinSpot. Uh, CRO, ETH is also gaining traction. CRO BTC, also gaining traction. Definitely want to see a close above these levels here, which is about 350, 360 sats, and it is on its way up there now. So hopefully we get a daily close above that to confirm a little more. Don't want to see it break down again. I think CRO's got the goods for this bull market anyway. So CRO's on the, on the list. 
One Inch and Badger are the last two. So let's have a quick look at Badger, which you can get on SwiftX. This is just a downtrend, all right? So this is the highest, highest risk crypto I have out of these because it's still in a downtrend and we haven't seen a breakthrough yet. You pretty much, the first thing you wanna do is to see a breakthrough of at least the downwards diagonal here. So the, the resistance on the way down, something like that to come back. That would be the first thing. Then you wanna see it set up. Then you wanna see the swing there and then take off again, break the next swing top. That would be the final confirmation, especially with some high volume as we begin to break through these levels. So if a bar came through here, broke through that on high volume, that would be the greatest sign for Badger. But for now, this is high risk, but you're, at, you're potentially buying at lows. There's just no turnaround sign just yet, but I like the look of it long-term, especially for the fundamentals. Now, the last one is one inch. One inch is beginning to climb its way, inch its way up. I've got to throw that one in there. Uh, basically, this is similar to the charts that we just looked at for lit and CRO. As you can see, it's making higher swings and beginning to break them on high volume. So one inch is back on the cards after we're looking at it here. It hit around six bucks and just sort of stopped with this double top before it plunged. Now this is confirmation again. This is a setup to potentially go a little higher, especially with the volume down here. This is USD. Let's look at BTC. BTC doesn't look as strong. Glad we got out of it way up here at around the 13,000 or 12,000 area because it's now sitting at around 8,000 Satoshis. So for, uh, for, for one inch on Bitcoin, we want to see it break through these levels here. So something to come up, sit back on those levels there. That would be the confirmation because there's just no, well, not much volume down here. Uh, this is higher volume than we have previously seen. So that's a good sign. So that wraps me up for all of those cryptos. I think we covered about 10 there. A lot of the majors, a lot of the minor-ish ones, some lower cap coins compared to the top 10. If you love the sound of that or you like some of them, let me know in the comments down below. Did I get yours? Did I miss yours? I know I miss some of the vet stuff that you guys always talk about. Leave those comments down below. I talk about them when I think they look like they have a good setup. Most of the time when people are mentioning coins in the comment section, not, no offense to the people, they're usually garbage. People mention these coins once they have taken off to the moon, they're just sort of straight up and they're all excited about them. But if you just go and look at a chart, they're rubbish for now. We need to see them pull back and then take off again. All right, so these ones are looking good and that they're the ones I have for you guys. So if you love that, let me know. Like button down below. Let's get it to 3,820 likes, the Fibonacci number. Subscribe if you haven't already. Bell notification icon because if the scammers can hit that bell, so can you. You can get here early like they do. They work around the clock to try to scam you guys. All right, so get here. I'll see you guys at the next video. Follow me on Instagram daily Q&A, the course, you know what's going on there. I left that in yesterday's video. It's coming to an end for the, the discounts at the end of this month. So if you want that, get on board, link down below. See you guys in the next one. Until then, have more fun to get more done.